Welcome, curious minds, to a world of knowledge and discovery. Hello, YouTube friends. Join us as we unravel the mysteries surrounding Pardalote. Pardalotes or peep wrens are a family, Pardalote today, for very small, brightly colored birds native to Australia with short tails, strong legs, and stubby blunt beaks. This family is composed of four species in one genus, Pardalotus, and several subspecies. The name derives from a Greek word meaning spotted. The family once contained several other species now split into the family Acanthizida. Pardalotes spend most of their time high in the outer foliage of trees, feeding on insects, spiders, and above all lerps, a type of sap-sucking insect. Their role in controlling lerp infestations in the eucalyptus forests of Australia may be significant. They generally live in pairs in small tunnels or in small family groups but sometimes come together into flocks after breeding. Pardalotes are seasonal breeders in temperate areas of Australia but may breed year-round in warmer areas. They are monogamous breeders, and both partners share nest construction, incubation and chick-rearing duties. All four species nest in deep horizontal tunnels drilled into banks of earth. Externally about the size of a mouse hole, they can be very deep, at a meter or more. Some species also nest in tree hollows. In the following section, we'll be immersing ourselves in the captivating world of taxonomy and systematics. The genus Pardalotus was introduced in 1816 by the French ornithologist Louis Pierre Villet to accommodate a single species, the spotted Pardalote, which is therefore considered as the type species. The genus name is from ancient Greek Pardaltus meaning spotted like a leopard. The family Pardalotidae as a subfamily Pardalotina was introduced in 1842 by the English naturalist Hugh Strickland. The Pardalotes consist of several species contained in a single genus, Pardalotus, with the general consensus being to recognize four species. The placement of the genus has varied, being first placed with the mostly oriental flowerpeckers Decaidae as both groups are dumpy-looking birds with bright plumage. In addition, both groups have a reduced tenth primary one of the flight feathers. Genetic analysis has shown that the two groups are in fact not closely related, and that the Pardalotes are instead more closely related than other Australian family, the Acanthizida, which includes the scrub wrens, gridens, and thornbills. The two are sometimes merged into one family. When this is done the combined family is known as Pardalotidae, but the two groups have also been treated as two separate families. Within the family two species, the 40 spotted Pardalote and the red-browed Pardalote, are fairly invariant species, but the remaining two species are highly variable. The striated Pardalote contains six subspecies, which are sometimes elevated to four separate species. The spotted pardalote has three subspecies, one of white of the yellow rumped pardalote is sometimes treated as a separate species due to its distinctive plumage and call and lack of zone of hybridization in southwestern Australia. Within the family the relationships between the subspecies are unclear, although it is thought that the 40 spotted pardalote is closely related to the spotted pardalote. Let's zoom in on description and understand its implications. The pardalotes are small, compact birds that range in size from 8.5 in length. The spotted and striated pardalotes conform to Burman's rule and are larger in the south than they are in the north. The males and females are the same size as each other, but there are some differences in the plumage of some species. They have short, square-tipped tails and relatively short rounded wings which are longer in the more dispersive species. The bill is short, deep and robust, but lacks the brittle bristles that surround the bills of many other insectivorous birds. Moving forward, we'll be taking a closer look at distribution and habitat. The pardalotes are endemic to Australia. The 40 spotted has the most restricted distribution of the four species, being endemic to Tasmania. In contrast, the most widespread species, the striated pardalote, is found throughout Australia only absent from some of the driest areas of the inland central and western deserts. The red-browed pardalote is widespread in the north and west of Australia, whereas the spotted pardalote is found closer to the coast in southern and eastern Australia. 
the family are eucalyptus forest specialists. While they may occur in forests and woodlands dominated by other tree types, these are marginal habitats for the family and are seldom used. Hardalotes occupy a wide range of eucalypt habitats, from tall forests with a canopy over 30 meters high to low Mali woodlands with a canopy of just 3 m. Let's now shift our focus to behavior and ecology and explore the ways in which it shapes our perspective. Pardalotes are almost exclusively insectivores. They will occasionally consume some plant materials, including seeds, and there has been an observation of one straight pardalote beating and then eating a lizard. They feed singly or in pairs during the breeding season, but have been recorded as joining mixed species feeding flocks in the winter months. The majority of foraging occurs on eucalyptus, with other trees being used much less frequently. Among the eucalyptus, trees from the subgenus Symphematus are preferred. Pardalotes forage by gleaning insects from the foliage, as opposed to catching insects while flying. Pardalotes may consume a number of different types of insects, but lerps, a honeydew casing exuded by insects of the family Psyllidae, form the major component of their diet and the one to which they are most adapted. These lerps are also highly sought after by the larger honeyaters, which aggressively defend the resource. A study of pardalotes in Australia estimated that 5% of a pardalote's day is spent evading honeyater attacks. Prepare yourself for an eye-opening discussion on movements in the upcoming portion of this video. Patterns of dispersal include regular winter movements northwards and to lower altitudes. Striaked pardalotes migrate from Tasmania across base straight to winter on the Australian mainland. Spotted and striaked pardalotes move from higher altitude forests to lower rainfall inland plains in SE Australia. Spotted and striaked pardalotes also move intermittently following increases in psyllids food sources. Some pardalote populations are sedentary. 40 spotted pardalotes are probably sedentary with local seasonal movements restricted to eastern Tasmania and its adjacent islands. Movements of red-browed pardalotes are unknown. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore status and conservation threats from a different angle. The striaked, spotted and red-browed pardalotes are widespread and common but their populations are decreasing due to habitat loss. Land clearing and commercial forestry in native eucalypt forests results in the loss of foraging habitat, nesting hollows and forest linkages essential for dispersal. The 40-spotted pardalote is listed as endangered by the IUCN and under Australian legislation. The distribution of the 40-spotted pardalote is restricted to a narrow habitat range and the population is small and fragmented. Threats include habitat loss, competition with colonial honeyaters, especially the noisy miner, and parasitism. The Tasmanian ectoparasite, Passeromia longicornis, demonstrates a higher parasite load and virulence with high nestling mortality in 40-spotted pardalote nests compared to striaked pardalotes. Over the two-year study by Edworthy et al., 40 spotted pardalotes fledged fewer nestlings 18% than sympatric striated pardalotes 26%. Climate change effects are uncertain but anticipated. Reductions in the distribution of the striated pardalote in the Western Australian woodwold are predicted due to climate change. If you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to drop them in the comments section.